Yeah, I'm the senior marketing specialist within Europeana and I mostly uh, engage with uh, end users. Uh, I set up concepts for end user engagement from the data that is within Europeana, the metadata. So at first, what is Europeana? Um, I don't know how familiar everyone is here with Europeana. Um, but basically, this is our mission. Europeana is a catalyst for change in the world of cultural heritage. Um, I like to see us as a network, so to say, a sort of ecosystem of partners who provide data to Europeana, uh, Europeana as a portal and as a, a catalyst for change, tries to um, uh, sort of, um, how do you say that, re re uh, revolutionize um, the way of thinking about uh, digitized data. So basically what we've been doing for the last six years is aggregating uh, data from all cultural institutions in Europe, 2200 cultural institutions in total, um, and showing it off in the portal europeana.eu. And uh, this is what the portal looks like. Most of you probably are familiar with it. Um, we've just launched a new version last month um, where the exhibitions have a, the virtual exhibitions that we do in Europeana have a more prominent place. Um, well it works as any search engine and you can connect to all the metadata inside. You can view the blogs um, and our social media networks. Um, apart from the portal, Europeana has a few web services uh, that end users or, uh, European or professionals in the cultural field can take use of. Here you see um, a project uh, European 1914-1918, about the First World War. Um, there is the virtual exhibitions exhibition, uh, uh, website um, and a few other services like the professional uh, pages. So the facts are, uh, we have now 27 million objects available within Europeana, all metadata uh, from these 2200 institutions in Europe. Um, it's digitized books, it's film, it's images, it's sounds. Uh, anything you can imagine under the name of cultural heritage. Um, and the way to organize this, or the way that it's being brought into the uh, database is through national or thematic aggregators uh, in the different countries or within the different fields. Um, so this is what it looks like basically within, uh, within the portal uh, record of, uh, for example, Melk Meisje from the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. Um, you can cite it on Wikipedia, you can, uh, this is a public domain marked uh, image, so it's free uh, for everyone, the whole uh, data set of um, the Rijks Museum is available for anyone to use. Um, so, um, another record um, that I stumbled upon, I think last week, are these pebble and shoes, I was looking for shoes within the European uh, database, don't ask me why, but, um, uh, and I found these, and this in itself perhaps is not that interesting, but then as I looked at the description, apparently these shoes belong to an old mistress who, was, um, who died in strange circumstances and was found in the wall of the house where she was being kept in prison. Well, so things like that you can find as well. Amazing stories, I think, if you I don't know, can browse through it and stumble upon something like that. Um, but also original handwriting manuscripts, this one by Victor Hugo, uh, Le Miserable, for example. Um, we've shared this, uh, obviously, when uh, Le Miserable had its premiere, the movie, um, which had quite some, uh, quite some results on the social media skill. Um, last September, Europeana released all its data under CC0 license, so all the metadata is available for anyone to use in any form. Uh, that's the description, that's the, uh, the, thumb, the thumbnail of the works. And that way, um, Europeana's role within the network perhaps also changed a bit. Where at first was ma mainly a portal where people can view all the items and uh, go through all the databases that are within Europeana. Um, now it, can also became, it also became a sort of a broker, a way of uh, showing the network partners what they can do with this freed metadata available for anyone. So not only just show it through Europeana, but also through different services. Um, like the hackathons that we've been uh, organizing for quite some time now already. Um, we have more over 70 prototypes of um, 
possible apps um, made with the Europeana API um, and the Europeana data. Um, this is a way, I think, for the network to see what you can do. I, I believe you have a hackathon going on right now, so you're quite familiar with that, I guess. Um, these are a few of the examples um, that are made with the Europeana uh, database. Um, Casual Curator, there below, that's um, an app for your, uh, for your iPad or um, um, any, any standalone device where you can curate your own exhibitions with, with data from the Europeana um, metadata. Um, time mesh about uh, a sort of layer application, uh, putting, putting images from Europeana over uh, current, uh, current sites, um, or art space. And the winner of the of the hackathon Hack for Europe in uh, 2012, um, which is uh, a way of showing images from the Europeana database as a sort of uh, 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 how do you say a television screen um, view of of uh, of the famous paintings, um, and also the free Europeana API, um, mainly used for. Um, enriching search results within search engines of uh, institutions who are part of the Europeana network. And this one, for example, uh, Inventing Europe, where exhibitions are being shown, um, curated by, uh, by guests or by uh, users themselves. Um, these, um, these exhibitions are being enriched with uh, search results from the Europeana or related items from the Europeana database all based on this uh, free API. And I think in the last months, there have been about 50, uh, 40, 50 requests for this free Europeana API per month. So um, I guess the most interesting thing is this, I don't know, it's, it's sort of um, enhancing the way of viewing Europeana content or the content of the Europeana partners in such a broad or such an immense scale um, if you imagine that all these 40 APIs are being installed somewhere at a website every month. So obviously we are um, very active also on social media. Um, I think in a way for us to uh, get speci uh, special attention to um, certain collections within the Europeana database. Uh, obviously this 27 million is, an, is a huge amount and not everyone knows or is interested in everything. So via social media you can tap into uh, specific user groups with specific interests uh, for, kind of for certain collections. Um, Facebook, for example, this is what we did last November. I don't know if that's also running here, but I guess well, uh, the Movember, where um, male men ask, uh, men ask attention for, uh, uh, for cancer and um, by letting them grow their moustaches in the, month of no the whole month of November, therefore Movember. We selected all the men with a nice moustache from the Europeana database, shared it on Facebook, things like that. I had quite some, uh, quite some following and um, also uh, quite a lot of shares also on different platforms like Retronaut and uh, things like that. Um, and I think a way of uh, our, like what we do on Facebook mainly is, uh, is trying to stay current. So we have a sort of daily post that relates to uh, a historic event or something that's going on at that moment. And I think this way of using social media at, as, a, as a sort of news news room, like relating to something current or relating that, well, to something that's happening is uh, for us a very successful way. So we've used here an image of um, the Rijksmuseum, I believe, to uh, announce or to let our followers know that this was the day that Venice was being founded so many years ago. Um, apart from um, the, this sort of, you could say, standard way of using social media, um, I'm responsible for creating a special end-user engagement program as well. Um, this is a more of a case study-like approach of uh, different, si different uh, sorts of social media websites. Um, we've been active on Pinterest and Tumblr and SoundCloud um, with, a specific, um, with a specific collection of an, uh, of an institution and trying to get a specific data of 
the usage of material, but also the kind of visitors of these websites and what the results for Europeana.eu, for example, are. And this way, we're, uh, within a few months, we make a report of this and we share this with the network. So there are a few criteria that we have in these concepts. They need to be innovative, they need to be scalable, they need to be measurable and most of all repeatable for uh, network members. So, what I said, we select the platform, uh, we invite uh, partners to uh, develop certain themes from within their collections and um, um, then we publish and we promote it together at Europeana. Um, I always say to partners, oh, obviously Europeana likes to work together with partners since they are the specialists uh, within, uh, within their field or within their, about their collection. Um, so for us it's a way to build strong relationships with them and to, um, I don't know, to get to, to use their knowledge uh, about their specific collections. But for partners, we, I don't know, we like to um, work together for them to show their, them a new audience, um, increase, the, increase the traffic to, to, uh, to their collections as well. And this is an example of what we did on Pinterest together with the University of Barcelona. We created this, um, uh, we created this board um, and we've, after a few months, uh, finished up the report. Uh, we, we showed, we, we followed the, the users uh, we followed what they did on Pinterest, but also what they did on Europeana. And we found out that users of Pinterest um, are actually good for high quality. Um, they are high quality users. They're not so much um, users who come in vast numbers to Europeana, but if they come to Europeana, um, the bounce rate is very low. So they stay longer on the websites than, uh, than any of the other uh, social media followers or, or search engine uh, traffic. Um, and also the page depth is really high. So people who come from uh, Pinterest tend to visit at least six pages within the Europeana database. Um, and I think that shows that um, at least searches, uh, researches like that have a certain value if you want to um, venture out on, on networks which you don't know exactly how or which one. So that's why we're creating these case studies. Um, we also stumbled upon a few unexpected uh, outcomes, uh, mainly that, for example, uh, images that have been used on Pinterest um, tend to index much higher within Google. Uh, so the search results they end up much higher in search results. For example, this image of the Vanya um, for now a, a public library which you normally would find like on the tenth page. Now because it's been on Pinterest, it's one of the top uh, search results. Um, or about this artist uh, who is also shared on Pinterest. Uh, his indexing also got much higher because of uh, uh, sharing it on Pinterest. Um, like I said, we've been venturing out. We did this on Pinterest. We're now uh, starting this project on Tumblr as well, together with the Europeana Fashion, a special project within Europeana. Um, here we're mixing a more contemporary, um, more contemporary uh, uh, data content um, together with fashion content. Um, Tumblr is quite popular amongst fashion blogs, so it's a good way to, uh, to get this fashion content out. Um, and we've been starting on SoundCloud as well, sharing our uh, sharing the, the sounds that we have within the database. Um, unfortunately, we don't have that much good that much good or I'd say interesting sounds. Um, we have a lot of folk music from the from the Balkan, which I don't know, I don't know what exactly what to do with that yet. Um, one of the last uh, things what we've been working together with Wikimedia a lot uh, for the last year. We've been trying to establish uh, good relationships, especially with uh, chapter, the Swedish uh, Wikimedia chapter. Um, it's, it had a, a sort of difficult start, so to say. Um, the Wikimedians work in a much different way than, than us cultural uh, institutions. They don't work from nine to five and they do everything voluntarily and they don't like planning at least half a year ahead, which I think we are very good at. Um, so we've had some difficulties, but we've had some fair results as well. 
Uh, last November we participated in the Wiki Loves Monuments contest, and probably also quite well known within uh, your communities. Um, we had our own category, Glam Images, uh, so we wanted followers to uh, photograph Glam Monuments. And this is our winner of last November, it's uh, Dracula's Castle. What we did is um, um, we asked Wikimedians who made a photo of a glam institution to tag them in the Europeana category uh, and then 50 of these images were selected as the most promising and we put it on our Facebook and we've asked any follower to uh, vote on these and this was the, the one with the most likes, um, an image of, uh, of a cross before the Dracula's castle. And um, la we were launching that right now, I guess, or tomorrow probably. Um, we've turned this in contest into a virtual exhibition for the Europeana platform, mixing it with Europeana content. So uh, all Wikimedia images who uh, were uh, voted most popular are uh, connected to uh, uh, pieces from within the Europeana collection database. Um, for over the last half year, we've had two edit-a-thons. Um, this, I think, is the, one of the most interesting ways of working together with Wikimedia um, since, I don't know, if you imagine that Wikimedia has about 500 million visitors per month, um, I don't know, it's, it's, that's more than any of us can reach in, in any way. So if you get your content in, a, in, in, in articles that are uh, being well written, or if you um, enrich your data again with your with content from Wikimedia. I don't know, I think the, 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 the possibilities are numerous. Um, this edit on specifically we organized last year in November here in Sweden with the Swedish Wikimedia chapter and it's about uh, the First World War. It was, um, it was uh, the Remembrance Day of the World War, First World War here. Um, and the funny thing is we, I didn't really know what to expect of this, of this um, Editathons. I thought, okay, maybe there are going to come 20 Wikimedians. Of course, I wanted to plan it like half a year ahead, but a week before, we didn't really know anything, what would happen. So um, I got here, and then there were 10 Wikimedians, and I thought, okay, is this a lot or it's not a lot? I had no, no clue. But we sat there with 10 people, and uh, we, had, uh, we had books. They had books just to, to write articles from, uh, specifically about the, World War, the first World War theme. And we uploaded 60 images from the Europeana database related to the, uh, to the first World War. Um, and about 17 of these images were used in articles or new articles were written or they've been used in articles that were already written. Um, and they translated, I think, about, uh, uh, in, in about six or seven languages. Um, so this is one of the images that was used, a postcard from Hitler uh, from the First World War. This image or this, this piece came to the Europeana database in one of our road shows. Uh, someone just came in and uh, said, I have a postcard and it appeared to be the postcard of Hitler. Um, we used this in the Swedish, uh, uh, Swedish Wikipedia entrance about Hitler um, and I think the results for some, coming from something like that, using this in a very popular page. The Hitler page is quite often, I've visited quite often. Um, and now has this Europeana uh, content with it. And it uh, provided us with almost 900,000 views within three months. Um, and I think this shows a sort of the power of, of Wiki, that you can have 10 Wikimedians, um, they to 17 articles, but the reach after that is much, much higher. Um, also in the months that followed, articles that were updated on this day with certain images uh, were copied into other languages uh, or referred to in other, in other uh, articles. So I think it's just a, I don't know, a stone in the pond is this, this edit-a-thon and then you can keep growing from there. Um, we had an edit-a-thon two weeks ago about European fashion. I don't have the numbers from that yet. But that was a completely different experience again. It was um, probably because it was about fashion. There were uh, about 20 girls who were totally not familiar with how to edit on Wikipedia. So it was uh, mostly for Wiki. It was a very good way of getting, getting girls on board since they made, I think they consist of 80% of guys or something. So they were happy with, uh, with those girls. I don't know the results for Europeana yet. I think it was a good, good edit-a-thon for, uh, for the Wikimedians, which, uh, which I'm also very happy about. Um, but
but um, I'll share that as soon as uh, as soon as I know something more. Um, yeah. So this about Europeana. I think uh, opening up uh, the database under CC0 license gave us the opportunity to venture out into so many more platforms uh, in so many more uh, ways. Which I don't know. That's something that I want to share. I think that opening up gives your content that much more uh, base uh, around the web, at least. <laughs>